Hi students, welcome to this lesson on MIDI. In this tutorial, we're going to discuss what MIDI is, talk a little bit about its history, where it came from, how it was developed, and also how it's used. First off, let's talk about MIDI in terms of what it is and what it isn't. MIDI is a computer protocol. So what that means, essentially, is that it's a way for uh, two devices to communicate with each other. You can also think of it in terms of a language. Language is a way for things or people to communicate. So if two synthesizers, in this case, are speaking the same language, they can communicate data back and forth between each other. That's, in basic terms, what MIDI is. What it is not is audio. Okay? MIDI is not audio. MIDI might be used to tell a synthesizer what to play, and that synthesizer then may produce audio, but MIDI itself is just a language so that synthesizers or sequencers, which store MIDI data, can communicate with each other. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. That's where it gets its name, M-I-D-I, Musical Instrument Digital Interface. That's what MIDI is. It's a computer protocol that allows synthesizers or sequencers and synthesizers to speak to each other. It is not audio. We certainly can use it to create audio by sending MIDI data or computer language to a synthesizer that it might understand, and then that synth can produce audio. But MIDI itself is not audio. And it stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. MIDI came into existence essentially in 1982. I believe the MIDI protocol was established and solidified at the 1983 NAM convention, which stands for National Association of Musical Merchants. But uh, it was kind of invented and, and uh, being worked on in or 1981 and 1982 by a guy named Dave Smith. Dave Smith was working at the time for a company called Sequential Circuits, and he was working on a new synthesizer called the Prophet 5. Some of you have may, may have heard of that synth. It's still around, and it's kind of a, a vintage synth now. People actually go out and, and look for it. One of the things he was working on with the Prophet 5 was a way to digitally control all of the individual components of the synthesizer. He figured if he could find out a way to digitally control this synth, then one of the things it would allow him to do would be to create and save presets. Because if he could digitally control all of the individual uh, elements of the synth, so maybe the filters, the waveforms coming out of the oscillators, uh, the ADSR, the envelopes, if he could digitally control all of those and have a small computer type device control all that data, then he could actually create presets. That's one of the things he could do. So that you could press a preset and all of that data that was being stored digitally could be sent out and set up all of those pieces of hardware, the filters, the oscillators, the ADSR envelopes, etc. In the process of that, working on this, he also started working with uh, some large American and uh, Japanese companies like Roland and Yamaha to see if there wasn't a way that he could actually also, using information, control the actual synths themselves. So that way, you could digitally control one synth from another. And what they came up with was what we now call MIDI. Uh, 
the specification, the MIDI spec, was version 1.0. And amazingly enough, that's, from my understanding, is still what we're using today. Even though it was invented back here, it just had its 30th anniversary, it's still a computer protocol that we use today. So pretty amazing, something technological that's still around 30 years after it was invented. So through the process of work finding a way to save presets and also digitally control uh, multiple voices in his synthesizer, it came up also with the idea and concept of being able to control one synthesizer from another. It's really hard to describe the impact that MIDI has had on the music industry. The closest similarity I can think of is if somebody asks the question, how have computers impacted the way we live our lives? Basically, computers have changed everything. The same was true with the advent of MIDI. It changed everything. It changed how players or musicians performed. It changed how composers worked. It literally changed every aspect of the business. To give you an example, um, in the late 70s, the early 80s, kind of some of the classic rock bands you can think of like Styx or Emerson, Lake and Palmer, bands like that, they used to have synth players that have racks of synthesizers. And these guys only had two hands, so they would have to play, you know, they could only get two synth parts to play at one time. And they would have racks of synths, maybe four or five synths stacked on top of each other, an Oberheim and a Mini Moog and these type of instruments. With the advent of MIDI, one player then that could actually control more than one synthesizer. So he could have one main keyboard or maybe two, and he can control multiple different synthesizers from that one keyboard. So it gave him a lot more capability. Composers, how they composed also changed. Before the advent of MIDI, you literally had to either be able to hear your composition in your head, or you had to be a pianist and be able to play it. And you would oftentimes, as a composer, just use pen and paper. Now, a composer could actually sequence his MIDI data and play it back on multiple synthesizers so he could actually hear every single part of his composition being played by a synthesizer. That way, he could know whether or not his composition was working, if each of the parts were working with the other parts. MIDI sequencers, by definition, record MIDI data. And you may go, well, wait a minute, Todd, that sounds a lot like kind of what we just got talking about, uh, analog and digital recording. It actually is very similar to digital audio recording. The difference is with digital audio recording, you're actually recording the audio performance. With MIDI sequencer, you are actually recording the MIDI data. And remember, the MIDI data is not audio. All it is is a series of instructions that we send from one device to another. In this case, from a MIDI sequencer to a synthesizer. There is a big difference between MIDI sequencers and digital audio recording. To understand where the modern DAW came from, let's actually take a look at the MIDI sequencer and the digital audio recorder. Shortly after the MIDI specification came out in 1983, there were numerous software companies that developed software that would allow you to record your MIDI data or sequence your MIDI data, as it was called, into a software application. It would store that data and then it would spit it out again at a later time so that you could control or manipulate your synthesizers with your MIDI data. Some of these early uh, companies that were at the forefront of MIDI sequencing 
One of them was Digital Performer. And this is actually an application I used up until about three or four years ago, and it's still a very strong application in the digital audio workstation market. One of the premier and first software-based digital audio workstations, or digital audio recorders, excuse me, was Pro Tools. And as you know, that's still a very viable digital audio workstation. In the beginning, though, in the early 1980s, these were separate applications. Digital Performer did not have the capability of recording audio. All it was was a MIDI sequencer. And digital recorders, like Pro Tools, did not have any, no, MIDI capability. This one had no audio. It wasn't until 8, 10 years ago, maybe a little before that, that each of these companies, and companies similar to them, started adding elements of the other to their particular palette of tools. So I believe Pro Tools 6 or 7 started adding some MIDI capabilities, albeit very poor. And now Pro Tools is a very capable MIDI sequencer, as well as a digital recorder. Same with Digital Performer version, I don't know, 3 or so, somewhere in there started adding elements of audio, though nowhere nearly as powerful as the editing capabilities of audio in Pro Tools. Now, almost every popular DAW has the ability to both MIDI sequence as well as record digital audio, digital audio recorder. Even applications like GarageBand that come free on a Mac have the capability to record both audio and MIDI data. For this reason, anybody who's new to the industry may make this mistake of thinking that audio and MIDI data are essentially the same thing. You just have to remember always that a digital audio recorder is recording audio, a MIDI sequencer is recording or sequencing instructions. And those instructions get sent to a synth, and then that synth can produce audio. But the MIDI data is just a set of instructions, has no audio sound to it at all. So that's where we got the modern DAW from, and that's the basis for the original MIDI sequencers and digital audio recorders.